Hey, what's up guys? Uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a circuit with an Arduino to monitor your heart rate using an infrared LED and detector. So the idea is that the infrared LED shines the infrared light up into your skin, and then as blood travels through your veins, the light is reflected back down and detected by the infrared detector. So it's a pretty cool circuit, and let's test it out. I'm gonna lay my finger here across the LED detector and then we should see my heart rate. So down here I have some LEDs that uh, correspond to my heart rate and then that information is also transmitted to the PC here where we are running a processing sketch and then of course it's it goes down the HDMI cable to the TV up here so you can see everything here. So it's really cool. It's, it's a cool circuit. It's a cool project involving a lot of components and I'll break it all down for you. So involving the the detection, the amplification, the filtering, the Arduino part, everything, including the processing sketch. So let's take a closer look at this circuit and see what's going on. Okay, so here's the circuit. And like I said before, there's not too much to it. It's pretty simple. Uh, down here, this is where you put your finger to, to uh, this is the infrared LED and detector. And it's all taped off like this so that the reflector only sees reflected light back from the infrared LED. So there's there's two holes here. One is for the uh, the detector, the other is for the, the LED. And it's just all taped off to sort of get rid of any ambient infrared light that might be picked up. And it's not perfect. So if I actually get a, get a read here, a lock on the measurement, you can see that. So, okay, so it's locked on. But it's not a perfect it's not a perfect setup here because even if I like sort of bounce my finger on it or apply varying pressure, it goes crazy. So maybe a better way to do this would be to like put this circuit on a clip somehow so that you would have, you know, constant pressure applied and it wouldn't there you would you know get rid of that variable. Because even if I lay my finger here, you know, if you're kind of bouncing around, it's not not perfect. But anyway, the output of that then goes over to an LM386 amplifier. And this is a pretty cool amplifier. Usually it's used for audio, audio applications, but uh, in this case it works great. You know, this was directly from my, uh, my whistle detection circuit. So it goes into that, then it goes through a two-stage low-pass filter here. So the corner frequency of each of these is about 16 hertz. And your heartbeat is slow, so it's perfect. And one thing you should know about infrared light that's given off in the, you know, in the ambient is that it contains a lot of high frequency content. So actually it might be kind of cool to show you that. But before I do that, the output of those two low pass filters feeds into an analog input on a standalone Arduino over here. So again, this is just uh, the same thing as your Arduino Uno board down here, except on a breadboard. And then we have 10 LEDs. So uh, let me show you that real quick. So let's show you first the output of, hopefully I can get it here. So this is the output of the, of just the, the, uh, the infrared detector. And you can see it's way down there in the mud. You can't even really see it. So let's look at the output now of the LM386. And by the way, I'm gonna go to the whiteboard here in a second and show you what you know, what the connections are all here. So here's the output of the 386. And you look at all that noise. So you can sort of see the heartbeat uh, signal in there, but it's just covered in 60 hertz noise. So let's look at it after the first low pass. So now it's gonna cut all, all that off, but you can still see it's a little jittery. So it did a pretty good job of filtering most of it out, but it's still there. So I put it through a second low pass, and let's look at that. Okay, and then that, that is perfect. It's pretty, pretty close to perfect, at least for display purposes. So it's not too bad. So anyway, that's the circuit. Let's go to the whiteboard, and I'll show you some of the connections that are made here and, and how everything's hooked up. Okay, so the first part of the circuit is the infrared LED and infrared detector. Each of these devices are two pins, or have two pins, okay? One leads longer than the other. Uh, you'll have to check the data sheet to see which pin is which. And I'll put a link to where you can find those parts in the description. Um, so the, the LED, the infrared LED, is simple. We're just using 150 ohm current limiting resistor. Uh, the detector 
is it again just two pins and it's just it acts like a transistor except the base is controlled by the amount of infrared light that it receives okay so that's how it passes current through from the collector to emitter so basically what we have here is 5 volts connected through a 5k ohm resistor through two pins off a 10k potentiometer but since we're only using two pins off it it's connected as a rheostat and then from that we're connected to the collector here and then the output of this collector through a one microfarad capacitor and then out here is our signal okay now a few things about this uh, you can play with this resistor here and that determines how much infrared light is going to be shined up into the skin so you can play with that just be careful you don't exceed the maximum forward current of this device uh, you can play with the resistor settings here and then that determines the sensitivity of this of the detector and your signal here and you can also play with the capacitor here so it's kind of a trial and error game until you get the perfect combination of parts here to get a nice solid signal there now if you only care about you know just the peaks of a heartbeat then that's one thing uh, if you want like a more defined signal so that you kind of see the rise and then like that second little hump then that's going to take some fine tuning so um, that's pretty much it on the infrared LED and detector let's move on to where this signal goes next okay then that signal enters into the LM386 amplifier uh, it enters in on pin 3, uh, pins 2 and 4 are grounded. Across pins 1 and 8, we put a 1 microfarad capacitor, and this gives the amplifier a little extra boost. Pin 6 is up to 5 volts. Pin 5 is your output, your boosted up signal. A uh, couple notes about this. You may be able to play with the capacitor you put across 1 and 8. Uh, you, could, you could bring that up as high as, I think, 10 microfarads, I think anything beyond that, the thing is going to be a little unstable. Um, or you could even try it without a capacitor there. Also, you want to make sure that you have a huge bypass capacitor system across pins 4 and 6. Okay, right across these pins, get as close as you can to these with like a 10 microfarad, a 1 microfarad, and a couple point one microfarads just to keep the power supply quiet for this device. And that's pretty much it. The output of this signal now goes to the, uh, the filter circuit. Okay, so this is the filter circuit and the signal enters in right here. And we go through two low pass filters. This is the first one, this is the second one. And the corner frequency of each of these is about 16 Hertz. So one over 100 times 100 microfarad times two pi will give you about 16 Hertz. And if you wanna learn more about low pass filters or just RC filters in general, I made a video a while back on that. I'll put a link in the description. So we go through two of these, and then uh, I put a 1K over here just to give a little bit of load impedance to this because this feeds into an analog input on the Arduino, analog input zero. So anyway, that's the whole circuit. And uh, now I think we can, uh, I think we can check out the code. Okay, so here's the code, and uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward, and I'm going to break this up into two parts. The first part is going to be the Arduino side, and then the second part of the code will be the, uh, the processing code, which is that cool application that displays the heart rate on the, uh, the screen. So first, we'll talk about the Arduino, and it's, it's pretty straightforward because we just, right now at this point, we have a nice clean analog input to the board. So... You're basically done, but if you want to do something cool with it, I'll, I'll explain that here. So first part of the code here, a couple uh, variables, no big deal. Uh, we're going we're gonna to set up 10 LEDs as outputs. Uh, yeah, okay, I probably could have multiplexed those, but since the Arduino is only doing one thing, I, I could use all its pins up, and I was being lazy. So next part, we set up the uh, serial port at 115.2 and this is to send data up to the computer so that we can read it into that application and display it on the screen. That's all there is to the setup. Then we jump into the loop here. And uh, okay, so this all part, all part of this code here is for us. So we're, we're gonna read in this value for the heart rate and it has a high and it has a low peak. You know, it's kind of it's not like swinging all the way from zero volts to five volts. It might just be swinging from like 
4 volts to 5 volts. And I want to, with those LEDs on the board, I want to swing it all the way from the lowest point to the highest point so that it's not like kind of stuck somewhere in the middle. So I want it to swing with the complete swing of the heartbeat. And that's kind of what we're calculating here. So we have two variables. We have a heart high, heart low. And then we do this little function here to search for the low point and the high point in the analog read from the last 200 reads. Okay, you know what? I'm going to come back to this. But anyway, because it'll make sense once you once you see how we do the, the read. So the, the analog read is here. We'll skip this and we're going to jump down here. So data zero is equal to the analog read of zero. This is the actual analog signal that's fed into the Arduino. Uh, then we map that that value here. So it's it's an analog value. It's a 10 bit uh, A to D. And so we get a value from zero to 1023. But we map it from zero to 600 so that we do a serial dot print line of that mapped value. And, and this corresponds to the, uh, the screen size on the other end. So that's only its only purpose is to map it just for the screen on the other end. Okay, but anyway, moving along here, then we do a delay of five milliseconds, and this delay is actually pretty important. So, if you didn't, if you just made this thing run as fast as, as you possibly could, then you would have 200 samples of your data uh, very quickly, and it wouldn't be really representative of the entire waveform. So basically what I've done here is made it five, Five milliseconds, we collect data after every loop of this thing, so that gives us that gives us 200 times five, which gives you one second, so 1,000 milliseconds, and that was the whole point of this. So that we've got one second of a waveform, which it should be the, the entire story we need, a high and a low. Anyway, okay, I'm probably rambling here. All right, so down here we control all the LEDs, but I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that. So it goes in, it controls all the LEDs, and then it comes back here. So I wanted to show you that we store the analog value in data zero. Okay, then we jump into this thing here, and this is for i is equal to 200, i is greater than zero, i minus minus. So this starts at 200 right here but it's equal to the one right below it. So if it were going through this for the first time, it'd be 200 equal to 99. So what's going through this thing and it's shifting everything up one. So the data in zero is going to go to data one. So that's why here we store the new value in zero. So it's constantly shifting the data out. So it's always keeping the most recent 200 values. That's the whole point of this code. and the other thing it does is it also searches for the high and the low value within those 200 samples. And that's all it does here. So we get the high and we get the low. Now we have we have the span of the heart heartbeat signal. Okay, so that's how that works. And if we jump down here now, um, and by the way, this code's commented pretty good. So if you just kind of go through it, it should explain itself. Um, down here, if the heart rate high minus low is greater than 150, then jump into this. This is where we control the LEDs and turn stuff on and off. And the reason for this is so that when we're flatlining, it's not going to make the LEDs go crazy. So it, it needs a span of at least 150 counts. Okay, so at least something there. So it detects a heartbeat of something. All right, and then it goes through and controls all 10 LEDs, and you can kind of see what the, the th common theme between here is. So if data zero, data zero is the current read off the, the analog input. If it's greater than heart high minus 0.95 times heart rate high minus heart low. So what we're doing here is we're taking the span of it, and we're taking 95% of the span and then subtracting that from heart high. So the point of this is, is so that if you have only a span of like, you know, like I said before, it's not going to be going from zero to five volts. It's going to be going like four volts to five, uh, like four volts to 4.5. So your span is 5, 0.5 volts. So you want the, the bottom LED here, which is 95%. So we want this, this LED to turn on when at least 95% uh, we're, we're greater than at least 95% of the span, okay? And then as you go through your 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, all the way up to 0 0.1. And this is the last LED that's, that's in the lineup. So 
when it when this signal gets at least 10% of the way up, that's when it turns this on. Okay? Otherwise, turn all the LEDs off, and that's the span check here. So if it's not if the span isn't greater than 150, then turn all the LEDs off. Okay, and that's pretty much it. That's the whole code. There's nothing else to it. So let's jump over to the processing now. Okay, so here's the code written in processing 2.0 that uh, displays that cool heartbeat uh, signal on the screen. Um, so let's just work our way through this. And, you know, processing is a really great... Uh, compiler to do these sorts of things because it has the same look and feel as the Arduino and the code is kind of written in the same way so it's it, it's a nice transition from the Arduino to writing code on the computer and uh, so let's just work through this line by line first thing is we set up or we import the serial library uh, so that we can communicate to the serial ports on the computer uh, we're gonna call this serial my port some variables, a string that's going to be used to read in the new data, uh, an ASCII line feed, which is a 10, and I'll talk more about that here in a second. Uh, just like the Arduino, we have a void set up, and the first thing we do is set the screen size. So this is our width and our height here, and I decided to use, see this, this here, display width. That will read in your screen width. And I subtracted 100 from that to kind of bring it in a little bit. And then the screen height is 600. Uh, string port name. So this, what this will do here is um, is bring in the, the so you're, you're naming the serial port. And, and the way you identify, you know, because your computer has multiple USB ports on it. So you could have multiple devices and you'd have various, you know, different serial ports, right, to choose from. So... What this does here is set up the port name from the serial.list. And in my case, it's serial port 4. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Actually, you can see it down here. So when you run this code, this here print line serial.list will print this down here. Okay, so in my case, my board is connected to this dev tty.usb serial, blah, blah, blah. So what I'm doing here is setting the port name to that value because I know that the Arduino is connected to that port. If you're using a PC, these are all going to be COM ports. Okay, this is a Mac, so they all look goofy like this. Okay, so anyway, if you look down here, then we set my port, which is your serial port, blah, 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 port name, which is right here, port name. Okay, and then we set the baud rate to 115.2 to match the Arduino. And then we're going to do a myport.buffer until this is setting up the serial port. So when we read from, when data is available, read until you get a line feed. And then look, line feed, line feed, that's an ASCII character 10. It's a, what's it, the integer, it's an integer 10, an ASCII line feed, okay? So that's what we do there. Then we set the background to this red color. That's all that does is set the screen to that red. And then we're done with the setup. So this is the RGB value of that red I used. And then we go into the void draw. And, and this kind of is like your void loop in your Arduino. Okay, then down here we have this kind of interrupt driven subroutine. And this is called anytime uh, data is, is ready on the serial port. So when data is available on the serial port, this will that will trigger this to occur. And it'll jump right into this. So let's say data is, is ready, it'll jump in here. The in string is equal to my port dot read string. So it'll read in the data, all of the data off of it. And then we do an in string equal to trim of in string. And you have to do this because your, your string of data that came in on the Arduino side, you did a print line, which prints the data, the number, so say you printed a 1023, you printed a 1023, that'll come in as four bytes of, of data. So you'll have a, a byte of data for the, the one, the zero, the two, the three, and then you have a line feed, which is that 10 that comes in too, right here. So we're gonna buffer until we see that, and then it stops. But what the trim does is it cuts off that 10, that extra line feed, and you have to do that because if you didn't, the next thing you wanna do won't work which is value here, this VAL, val, 
which is an integer I set up up here, is equal to the integer of in string. So what this does is it converts that string, the individual bytes, the one, zero, two, three, into a 1023 number. That's something we can actually use in this program. Okay, right after that, we set this stroke weight, which is the width of our line. We set the stroke color, which is the color of the line, and this is RGB, so it's all white. And then down here, and, and by the way, this is all commented out pretty good, so it should be easy to, to follow. Uh, then we actually draw the line. So we, the way this works is you draw from a point to a point. So we have old X, old Y, two screen increment, to 600 minus value. So, okay, I think I'm going to have to explain a little bit more on what, what, what all this is before I actually go get into that. So let's just keep going. Old X, old Y. So, so when, when it draws the line, it sets the future or the, the next. So it goes from this to this, but then it sets what it went to to the old so that the next time it goes through your your previous point was you know the the point it was over here so it's like drawing it's drawing a straight line through the screen like that so it's going point to point but it's drawing just tiny little lines across to make up one line that goes across the whole screen hopefully that makes sense I'm kinda kinda rambling with this a little bit um, okay I'm trying to think if there's anything you need to see before yeah I guess we can explain this so it goes from this point to this point, and screen increment is is what we're incrementing every time we get new data, so that it's going, it's notching its way through the screen to display the heartbeat signal, and this is the X of the future point, you know, so it's from and to. Then this is the Y of the point, which is 600 minus value, so the height of the screen is equal to 600 the value coming in was scaled from the Arduino it should be a value from 0 to 600 so the reason we have to do the 600 minus value is because the top of the screen in processing is equal to 0 the bottom would be equal to 600 so we just wanted to invert that to go 600 minus value okay and like I said before your old X and old Y become where your old point was Okay, so it's just inching along the screen as it draws just a single white line. Okay, then it increments that screen increment. So this is what increments to the next pixels. And I use two in this case. You could use one. You could use anything you want to, to control the speed. But the bigger this is, then you're going to get kind of straight lines, like a jagged thing for, for your display, which probably wouldn't look that good. Okay, once you hit the edge of the screen, like once it, it goes all the way to the edge, that's what we do here. So if screen increment is greater than the display width minus 100, which is the overall, which is the overall width is like we set up here, then go ahead and blank everything out. So we reset the background and then reset the screen increment. And I set it way back. I could have set this to zero, but I set it way back to negative 50 so that it kind of comes into frame a little bit smoother. You know, if you set it right to zero, then all of a sudden you got like a big freaking white line all of a sudden coming out of nowhere. So this is this kind of helps with that. And you can play with this these values if you plan on building this, doing this project. Okay, and that's pretty much it. That's the code. So it's pretty simple. Now what we'll do is I'm going to now what before I get into this on the Mac I had a lot of problems running it live. Like sometimes if the serial port kind of hung up on me or I accidentally pulled the plug on it, it would hose everything up and it would crash my computer. So I found it a little bit easier just to go ahead and export the application every time just to test it. And then it creates a folder here for, oops, that's the Windows application. By the way, this only kind of work if you, if you are working off a PC, this only works in uh, three or yeah, 32-bit Windows, 64-bit Windows. I don't think it works. Okay, okay. So actually, just as I was recording this, I had a I had a crash just because my serial ports down here. You can see down they actually changed. So instead of four, uh, now my my serial port in the list is zero from unplugging and plugging back in. They rearranged. 
Uh, that might be just because I also have a USB microphone plugged in. But uh, anyway, once you export application, it will it'll be in this folder as an application, and then you can run it. And here is the application running. So just as a test, I'll show you that it actually works. Put my finger on it, and there it is. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, and that is the project. So uh, good luck with this, and uh, thanks for watching.